The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Trust. To trust someone. What does that mean? I suppose that in simple terms, it means you feel sure that a certain person will not let you down. That you can put complete confidence in him or her. Assuredly, trust ranks among the strongest expressions of the human psyche. Yet it is also the most delicate and vulnerable, as Claudia Hammond found out. Our mystery drama, Trapped, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Nina Foch. This thing, trust, it's as strong as tempered steel, yet as delicate as, uh, well, a piece of porcelain. Strong because it grows slowly, deeply, in the compost of unselfish deed. Example, you would not trust me on brief acquaintance, but if I did several unselfish things for you, you would say, I trust E.G., because my welfare means more to him than his own. Yet, should I do one selfish thing, for whatever reason, and your trust, your confidence in me would crack, perhaps even shatter. No, Claudia. When you want to sit up in bed, you let me adjust the pillows. That's what I'm here for. Dear heaven, Mary. Can't I exert myself at all? Not if you want to recover from your heart condition. Bed rest. That's what Dr. Stein ordered, and that is what I am paid to see you get. Money can never repay you for all your care. Oh, now I'm rewarded in other ways, in watching you get better. Huh, better. You are getting better. Oh, it's slow, but you mustn't despair. Mailman. Todd, darling. <laughs> in person. How's the most beautiful wife in the world doing today? She's very well, Mr. Hammond. Oh, it looks it, too. Rosy cheeks, bright blue eyes, shining gold hair. <laughs> Give your actor husband a kiss. Mm -hmm. Speaking of my actor husband, shouldn't you be at the theater? Oh, I'll make it. Jerry kept me on the phone talking over the new film contract, and I wanted to sort the mail before taking off. Here's your batch. Thank you, darling. One more kiss. <laughs> and I'm off. Take good care of her, Mary. You know I will, Mr. Hammond. Well, now. Let's see what your handsome mailman has brought today. Now, let me open some, Mary. All right, you can open these while I... Well, well, what's this? What? It's a letter addressed to Mr. Hammond. He must have overlooked it when he sorted the mail. Huh? Hmm. Shell pink envelope. Perfumed. Woman's handwriting. <laughs> this is not a mash note. Todd gets them by the gross. Open it, Mary. Let's see what it says. Oh, should we? Of course. Todd shows me all this fan mail. Oh, but well, you know, proposals of marriage and offers of love and, oh, I don't know what all. What's the matter? Um, a matter? The way you look when you open that letter. Mary, what is it? Now, let me see that letter. No, 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 Claudia, I'll just give it to Mr. Hammond when oh, he... Mary, please, let me have that letter. All right. What? What? Mary, did you read this? Well, I glanced at it enough to... Todd, dearest, of course I love you as deeply, passionately, as you love me. And you're right. Claudia does stand between us. So, dearest heart, I've changed my mind. I will go along with your plan to put her out of the way. Signed, Margot. Margot, whoever she is, could use the services of a psychiatrist. You... you think this is just one of those crank letters? Oh, what else could it be? 
Claudia, you, you don't think it's anything but that. <sighs> if it is, he'd have good reason. What are you talking about? I'm not a wife anymore. I'm a burden. Now, I will listen to no more of that. That husband of yours doesn't just love you. He adores you. Or acts as if he does. All right. All right. Have it your way. Now, it's time for you to take your tonic and have a nap. I don't want any tonic. You've got to have it. It's the one thing that really builds up your strength. Strength? For what? To go on living? Of course. Oh, Claudia, honey. What makes if you... If Todd doesn't love me anymore, I'd just as soon be dead. <laughs> Todd? That you? Sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> I, I didn't mean to wake you. Just to look in on you. Turn turn on a light. No, 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 no. Go back to sleep. What time is it? It's 2.30. 2.30? Where have you been till this hour? Well, with Jerry, talking film production this time. I'll be glad when he gets that picture deal straightened out. But come on now. Back to sleep. Aren't you going to kiss me goodnight? Mm, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hey, 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 down, girl, down. Oh, Todd, Todd, I love you so much. Oh, no more than I love you, sweetheart. But you know what Dr. Stein said about I don't it. care what he said. Oh, Todd, I want you. I want to be a wife to you. The wife I used to be. You are a wife to me. The dearest, most adorable wife any man could have. I'm an invalid. A millstone round your neck. <laughs> if... If that's the case, you're the prettiest millstone I've ever had around my neck. Good night now. Sleep well. Todd? Yes? Who is Margot? Margot? Margot who? Just Margot. Who is she? I, I don't know. I, I mean, why do you ask? <sighs> Nothing. You must have a reason. No. It's nothing. Good night. Good night, dear. A friend. No name. It's just signed, a friend. Oh, now this is getting to be... May I see that letter, Claudia? Thank you. Dear Claudia Hammond, you don't know me, we've never met, but I happen to know that your husband and a woman named Margot... He has been seeing for months now, plan to kill you. Oh, really? Now, read the rest of it. Guard yourself. Be careful what you eat. Above all, don't take any of the tonic your doctor prescribed unless you trust the person who gives it to you. Signed, a friend. Mary, I'm... I'm scared. You have nothing to worry about as long as I'm here. I feed you. I give you your tonic, and I take care of you. So what do you have to fear? What about your day off? Well, Mrs. Gates comes in then, and you can certainly trust her. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. All right. All right, then. I won't take any days off. But you can. Of course I can. At least until this whole silly, stupid thing is cleared up. And believe me, Claudia, <laughs> that is what it is. It's silly and stupid. <laughs> I wish I could believe you. Claudia, Claudia, please. I want Mary back. Get Mary back, Todd. Dearest, I told you it's impossible. I don't believe it. I don't. Now I... stop that. Stop it. What? Oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. But you can't go on letting your emotions run away with you. It could kill you. It could. You know it could. Now calm down and listen. Mary came to me this morning and said she had the offer of another job, nurse companion to an elderly and wealthy woman. I asked her what salary she'd be paid, hoping that I might meet it. But I couldn't. It's three times what we're paying her. I, can't... I don't care. I want Mary. Honey, I'm sorry, but you just can't have Mary. Tell her I want to see her. I'll talk to her. I'll persuade her. You can't talk to her. She's gone. Gone? She left an hour ago. Left? Without saying goodbye? She said to tell you she couldn't bear to face you. Oh, 
I can't believe this. I simply can't. Look, the world hasn't caved in. Mary was good. But there are other practical nurses. In fact, I'm going to run over to the agency right now to interview several. Leaving me alone? You're safe enough for an hour or so. You've been left alone before. Never as alone as I am now. What? Nothing. I won't be more than an hour, I promise. What are you doing? Giving you your tonic before I go. No. Sweetheart, you've got to take... No, I said no. Okay, okay. Won't hurt you to skip it for once. It isn't exactly a matter of life and death. Isn't it? Who's there? Who's there, I say? Shh, shh. Don't be scared, Claudia. It's only me. Oh, Mary. I saw Mr. Hammond leave and took the chance. He forgot to ask me for my key. But, Mary, why have you come back? Todd said you didn't want to see me. Didn't want to say goodbye because it would upset me. Oh, now, why would I say anything like that? How could I possibly upset you more than he did by firing me? He fired you? Well, yes. Why do you think I left? Claudia, what did he tell you? Well, that you had a better offer with some wealthy woman or other and that he couldn't afford to keep you as my nurse. I see. Mary, what is this? Oh, honey... There was no offer of another job. He fired me. He told me to pack my things and get out oh. and never come back. Then, then he's getting ready to... Now, now, it, it looks that way. Oh. But, but I'm going to call the police. The police? There's no other way. With me out of the house, you need protection. But what can the police do? There's no proof Todd means to kill me. There are the letters. You still have them, don't you? Oh, yes. But do you think they're enough, those letters, to convince the police? Won't they think what you thought at first... Crank letters? Very likely, but they're all we have. Now, you keep them until I need them. And I'd better leave. He could come back any minute. Oh, oh, oh here. I wrote it out for you. It's my telephone number. And you call me. You just call me any time you need me. Oh, Mary, I can't let you go. I know, honey, I don't want to go. But we have no choice. But don't you worry. You are going to come out of this. Believe me. Question is... Will I come out of it alive? Hi, darling. Here I am. Bag and baggage. Come in, sweetie. I'll show you your room. Mary's former room. Hmm. You got rid of her, I take it. Fired her this morning. Good. But I told Claudia she'd left for another job. One that paid better. So careful you don't give the show away. You don't have to worry about me, darling. No, but just be careful what you do or say. The last thing we want is Claudia getting suspicious. Leave it to me. Well, this will be your room. Oh, nice. And now, I'll introduce you to Claudia. Oh, uh, did you decide on a name? How does uh, Catherine Brent suit you? Mm, not bad. Okay. Let's put this show on the road. <laughs> Catherine? Trust, as I said, is both strong and delicate. I might also have said that it can be misplaced. As it virtually goes without saying, Claudia misplaced hers. It's a mistake to misplace one's trust. A serious, indeed a dangerous mistake. For Claudia, it may be the last mistake she'll ever make. I'll return shortly with Act Two. Our theme is trust. Abiding faith of one person in the honesty of another. Yet who of us has not at one time or another been duped by a person in whom we reposed complete confidence? Or did we dupe ourselves? Did our very faith in another place too much of a burden on him or her? In sum, did we have the right to impose our trust on another? Claudia, this is Catherine Brent, your new nurse. She's replacing Mary. Hello, Mrs. Hammond. I'm delighted to meet you. Well... Aren't you going to say hello to Catherine? 
Hello. Catherine. I, I, um, I, I'll leave the two of you to get acquainted. Got to get to the theater. We're rehearsing a new second lead for tonight's performance. Goodbye, sweetheart. Take good care of her, Mark. <laughs> Catherine. Trust me, Mr. Hammond. I mean to take very good care of her. Well, now, Mrs. Hammond, what can I do for you? You can leave me alone. Very well. But uh, there are some things I must do. Uh, see that you take your meals, your tonic. Oh, by the way, where is it? Your tonic. Oh, uh, never mind, I see. This bottle here. And it's just about time for you to have it. I don't want it. Oh, tastes bad. Well, does it? No. <laughs> well, then why don't you want it? Don't you know? I'm not a mind reader, Mrs. Hammond. Neither am I. But I can read yours. In that case, you must know that I intend to give you your tonic whether you want it or not. You can't force me to take it. True. Well, then... I said I intended to give it to you whether you wanted it or not. I didn't say that I'd succeed. Clever, aren't you? Matter of fact, I am. Yes. I'm impressed. Does it help you, your cleverness, to steal other women's husbands? Uh, I beg your pardon? You heard me, Catherine. Well, it must taste bad. That's it, isn't it? Won't answer? Well, find out for myself. It doesn't taste bad. Tastes rather like a nice red wine. You sure you won't change your mind? I... You drank some. You... Oh, I hope I... you don't mind. Just just a small glass full. Oh. Here now, won't you? That's it. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> what? Well, it looks like I succeeded, after all. You are clever. Very clever. And thank you, Dr. Stein. Thank you very much. Good night. Well, you heard what he said, Claudia. Yes. If you continue to refuse to eat, to drink, to take the tonic, you'll find yourself in a, well, such a weakened state that I don't know what'll happen to you. I'll die. That's what you want, isn't it? Well, don't just stare at me. It is what you want. <sighs> Sweetheart, Dr. Stein said... Well, he said if you don't keep your strength up, you'd begin to think all kinds of crazy things, you know, delusions like that. And Well, damn it, sweetheart, I'm beginning to think you are. It's no delusion. You do want me to die. To put me out of the way. Claudia. And I don't blame you. How could I? I mean, look at me. An invalid so weak I can't even leave this bed. A useless woman. A useless wife. Oh, Claudia. You think I don't know how it must be for you? You're a man. Not just any man, but a Broadway star who could have any woman he wanted. And all you've got is me. All I want is you. Don't lie to me. Oh, please, don't do that. I couldn't bear that. You remember our promise to each other. The promise? You don't remember. And it isn't so long ago. We were so in love then. So in love. We promised we would trust each other. We sat in that little garden by the side of St. Bartholomew's Church on Park Avenue. Oh, yes, yes. I, I remember the promise now. Have you kept it? Have you? Claudia, you're weak. You're worn out. Have you? What are you doing to me, to yourself? Have you? Claudia. Claudia! Claudia, what is it? What's she, that? She, another heart seizure, I think. Phone Dr. Stein. He's not back in his office yet. Phone, anyhow. Get it on record that you phoned. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes? You decent? Can I come in? Decent? You have got to be kidding, darling. Stein just left. And? She'll be all right for a time. But he made it plain if she goes on refusing to eat to take the tonic. 
It's curtains for. So? What do you mean, so? Just what I say. So. I'm sorry, Todd. She hadn't been ill all these months. If I hadn't had needs, a man's needs it. You'd have had no need for me. Is that what you're saying? I guess maybe it is. I thought I was something more than the fulfillment of your needs. I thought... Ah, never mind. If you want out, you say so. You say so now. It isn't as simple as that. It is to me. You're putting me through a hell of a time. The deal isn't worth it. Oh? Todd, I'm still willing to go through with this. But I just as soon get out right now. What do you want me to do? We'll go ahead with things. Claudia. Dear Esty, it's a mm. simple, clear bribe. Oh. You're wasting away. Well, if you're so worried, let me go to a hospital. Why in heaven's name a hospital? You know why. Claudia, I don't. Why a hospital? What difference would that make? At least, at least I could eat without fear of... Fear of what? <laughs> Hello. Oh, yes, Dr. Stein. No, she's still refusing. Oh, I, I don't know. Doctor, she she wants to go back to the hospital. Oh. <laughs> well, that's the way I see it, too, but... Yes. All right, doctor. And thanks very much for calling. What did he say? Can I go back to the hospital? No. No? He doesn't see what good that would do. He said it's simply a matter of your taking food, the tonic, to build up your strength. And if you refuse to do that here... You're lying. Claudia. He said no such thing. You want to keep me here. You and Margot. Margot? Oh, don't act as if you didn't know. But I don't. I hope I'm not interrupting. Huh? I just came to see if Claudia had taken her bra off. No. Oh, now, look, Claudia, I am knocking myself out trying to take care of you, and that includes cooking. And, sweetie, if you're not going to eat, I'd just as soon not cook. Don't, then. Don't cook. What does it matter how you kill me? By poison or starvation, just so you do it? Kill you? Claudia, what in heaven's name are you saying? You know what I'm saying. The two of you. Oh, Claudia. I said this before, but I'm saying it again. You're imagining things. Am I? I'll show you. I've got them here on my pillow. Oh, Claudia, don't exert yourself. Whatever it is, I'll get it for you. Get away from me. Darling, I... I'll get it. Uh, here. I'm imagining things, am I? Is this letter a dream? And this? Let me see. Oh, no. No, no, you don't get your hands on them. They're the only evidence I've got of what you're up to. Evidence? It's all here in this letter you sent Todd. But he never got because it was mixed up in my mail. I'm sure you'll remember it. Todd, dearest, of course I love you as deeply, passionately as you love me. And you're right. Claudia does stand between us. So, dearest heart, I've changed my mind. I will go along with your plan to put her out of the way. Signed, Margot. Well, what do you have to say now, Margot? You think that I am the woman who wrote that letter? That I am Margot? That's incredible. I had no idea, none whatever, that this was why you were refusing to eat a drink. Oh, Claudia, sweetheart, darling, whatever you've been thinking is wrong. You're wrong. You're all wrong. You're certainly wrong about me. My name is not Margot. It isn't Catherine either. Well, is it? Well, of course it is. No. Todd. No, no, no. It isn't. Catherine isn't her name, Claudia. It's Margaret. Margaret Sutton. Margaret Sutton? What do you think I was born yesterday? Claudia, you believe me? I saw I... Margaret Sutton on the stage often enough. She was slim and dark, and this woman is... She's... She's... All right, say it, darling. A fat peroxide blonde. I'm afraid I've got a bigger appetite than you. If this woman is Margaret Sutton, why did you say her name was Catherine Brent? I thought it would be best not to remind you of the past. 
You were so jealous in the early years of our marriage. I, I never dared even mention Margaret's name. What is she doing here? Why did you replace Mary with her? I needed someone I could trust to take care of you. Well, if you needed someone you could trust, why did you fire Mary? I told you, Mary had the offer of a better job. That's a lie. Mary told me you fired her. You did, didn't you? Well, since it's all coming out, I guess you'll have to know. You fired her? Yes. Why? She, Claudia, I don't want to hurt you. I know how fond you were of Mary. And always will be. She was the most devoted, dedicated person I've ever known. No, Claudia. It was all an act. The simple truth is that Mary was in love with me. In love? With you? Almost from the first day she entered this house, she started doing everything she could do to... Well, get me to fall in love with her. If you expect me to believe... I don't expect you to believe it. But what I'm telling you now is the truth. Things went from bad to worse over the months. She got more and more difficult to handle and finally... I couldn't take it anymore. I fired her. Claudia, that is the truth. Go away and leave me alone. Claudia, look at me. I swear I'm telling you the truth this time. Leave me alone, please. Please leave me alone. Better do what she wants, Todd. Oh, she could die right now. Come on. <laughs> I've got to hand it to you, Todd. I always knew you were a good actor, but not that good. I told her the truth. But not all of the truth. By no means the whole truth. <laughs> What is the whole truth? What game are these two playing with Claudia as the pawn? Todd has lied to Claudia again and again. What lie or half-truth has he told her this time? I'll return shortly with Act Three. foundation stone of trust is truth. Accordingly, since Todd Hammond has lied to his wife Claudia repeatedly, she can scarcely be expected to trust him. So far as I'm concerned, she'd be a fool if she did. Apparently, she feels as I do, for as we rejoin her now, a helpless invalid trapped in her bedroom, we find her telephoning the police. This is Claudia Hammond. Claudia? Hammond. H-A-M-M-O-N-D. Hey, yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? My husband and, and a woman. A woman he's in love with are trying to kill me. I need your help. Please, I need help. Uh, uh, certainly, ma'am. Uh, we'll give you all the help we can. Who is your husband? Todd Hammond. Todd Hammond, the actor? Yeah, sure. You say he's trying to kill you, him and this woman? Yes, yes. And what's her name? She's trying to palm herself off as an actress named Margaret Sutton, but I know better. Her real name is Margot. Margot who? I don't know. I, I'm an invalid, helpless and bedridden, and he wants to get rid of me. How's he trying to do this? What's he doing? He's poisoning my food, everything I drink. Are uh, you on any uh, kind of pills like that? You think I... I'm high on pills. That I'm imagining things? No, no, no ma'am, I didn't say that. Oh. Maybe just a little excited, a little hysterical? I'm not uptight. I'm not hysterical. I'm telling you the truth. They're trying to kill me. Hello? Uh, what's your address, ma'am? 1219 Park. Apartment house? Yes. Apartment number? Penthouse B. Okay, we'll check this out. In fact, I'll check it out personally. What do you mean you'll check it out? Oh, this doesn't to check out. They're trying to kill me, Todd and Margot. Only she doesn't call herself Margot. She calls herself Margaret Sutton. And I can prove it. I tell you, I can prove it. I've got the letters to prove it. Letters? A letter 
from her to him, saying she was willing to help him kill me, and another letter from a friend warning me against them. What friend? What's your friend's name? You don't believe me. I didn't say I don't believe you. I shouldn't have called. I should have known I'd only be wasting my time. I should have known you wouldn't believe me. <coughs> oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Mary. Mary, of course. Why didn't I think of her before this? Hello? Mary. Mary. This is Claudia. Oh, Claudia, I've been so worried about you, but I didn't dare phone you. Because... Yes, yes, listen to me. It's happening. What the two of them planned, Dodd and Margot. That she replaced you, what? and he pretended she was a nurse from the agency. He lied. He even gave her a different name. Called her Catherine Bread, and then... Well, you, you won't believe this. You, you really won't believe it. She tried to palm her off with an old flame of his, Margaret Sutton, who was slim and dark, and this woman, this Margot, she's fat and... Claudia. Yes? Now, now, you must control yourself, dear. Yes. Because of your heart. You're putting a terrible strain on your heart. Yes, yes. I'll... I'll quiet down. That's my girl. Mary! Now, 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 hush, hush. Just listen to me. They're not going to harm you. Because I'm not going to let them. The police? Yes, I went to the police as I said I would, but I could see that they didn't take me seriously. No, me neither. I was just talking to... them. What, and... what, what is it? What is it? Is there uh, something wrong? If Claudia... you ca can't send the books over today, then send them when you can. Goodbye. Bookstore? Yes. You ordered some books. I'll be happy to go and get them for you if they can't send them over today. Do you dare let me out of your sight? Just to go around the corner? Ten minutes at most. Which is why I don't understand how they can't deliver today. Who were you talking to, Claudia? That's none of your business. Suit yourself. Uh oh That'll be Dr. Stein, I guess. Dr. Stein? He's going to give you your vitamin injections. Oh, and, uh, darling, don't waste your time telling him Todd and I are killing you. He thinks you're off your rocker as it is. You were supposed to monitor all her calls, but you let her phone the police. I'm sorry, Todd, but even you will have to agree I have only two hands, two eyes, and two ears. I can't be everywhere and do everything at once. A detective coming to see me backstage. I'm sorry. Oh, I guess it's not that important. What's important is not to let her get in touch with Mary, or Mary with her. What happened with the detective? He didn't believe her, of course. Just checking up was all. But she did manage to get past you, and that worries me. Mary could start an awful lot of trouble. And that's the last thing in the world I need right now. Take the phone out of her bedroom. No. We don't have to go that far. There's an easier way. Just take this extension off the hook. You're kidding. No, oh, it, it was a gimmick. Used in a play I was in years ago. That way she can't call out and nobody can phone in. But watch her. Watch her like a hawk. One slip up and it, it could mean the end. Believe me, the end. Mary's number now. Where is it? Ah, uh, here. the extension. It's like in that play he was in. I can't phone out and nobody can phone in. Oh, God. God, help me. Please. I don't want to die. Please. Oh, please. I want to live. Could I? Could I possibly... 35. He won't be back from the theater till after 11. And she's... I'll take my chances. If I... If I can only... Get out of bed. Walk. Crawl if I have to. Oh. Everything's swimming. Dizzy. I mustn't faint. Mustn't. Weak. So weak. Life depends. 
your life. Now, one step. Open the door. by her bedside all night, it does no good. You've got a matinee. I I'll sit with her. You're dead on your feet, too. <laughs> dead. What a word to use now. She isn't dead, and she may not die. No. She lost so much blood. Wrists cut when she crashed through that table. So much blood they didn't dare move her to a hospital. And now look at her. White as a sheet. Go and get some sleep, Todd. I'll stay with her. And Todd... Yes? Forget the deal. I don't get you. I agreed to play nurse because you needed somebody you could trust. You know something, darling? You trusted the wrong woman. You wanted me to protect her against Mary. And I said, okay. In exchange for that character lead in your new film. But you know what I was really after, Todd? Oh, no. Not you. Not after all these years. Afraid so. I'm a woman. I love you. Enough not to envy you your happiness with her. I love you too. But I love her a hell of a lot more. <laughs> Mary? Shh. Shh. Now listen, dear. They're asleep. He in his room and her in that chair. I still have my key. Oh, Mary. Mary, you came at last. Shh. Shh. Now quiet, dear. I'm going to take you down in the service elevator. I jammed the door. And then into my car and home to my place. Where you'll be safe, honey. Really safe. Now, can, can you walk? I can't even get up, dear. And I can't carry you. Honey, you've got to find the strength to walk. Um, the tonic. I'll give you a glass of the tonic. That always gave you quick strength. No, it's poison. Oh, no, no, no. They wouldn't have dared to do that. If they succeeded in poisoning you, the coroner would have impounded the bottle. No, no, they'd have poisoned the glass, not the bottle. Here, now you drink this right down. Yes, yes. No, no. Uh, awake. You're awake. You bet I'm awake. And waiting for you. Oh, I've been waiting for you to give yourself away. So Mr. Hammond and I could turn you over to the police. What? With the evidence to convict you. Evidence to convict me? You're crazy. She's crazy. This woman's crazy. Claudia, Todd told you the truth about Mary being insanely in love with him. What? Oh. A propositioning him. The whole scene. Todd put up with her insane nonsense till she said something one day that made him realize she intended one way or another. To kill you. Oh, you're yes. lying. That isn't true. It, it can't be true. Not of Mary. It's all too true of Mary. And I can prove it. I can prove it by what Mary just told you. I, what? What did Mary just tell me? That if Todd and I wanted to kill you, we'd not have risked poisoning the bottle of tonic. Only the glass. What? Well, I never poisoned the bottle. And so I'll drink it straight off. There. You drank the whole bottle. It's 
quite delicious. And healthy. So you drank it. What does that prove? It proves that what you poured into the glass, Mary, could not have been poisoned unless you slipped the poison into the glass, which you did. No, I did not. In that case, Mary, drink the glass. Well, go on, Mary. Drink it. Mary. I hate you. I have always hated you, you sniveling little invalid. A man like him needing a woman, needing a wife, the kind of wife that I could have been. That's why I wrote those letters, to prepare you for the death that you had coming to you and to play it smart. Yes, smart. Because if anything had gone wrong, he would have been blamed for your murder, not me. You're crazy. I am not crazy. She's stupid, too. Todd, stupid? I was stupid? A letter from a friend. Only four people knew Claudia took that tonic. Claudia, Dr. Stein, me, and you. March, call the police, will you? Trust. Truth. Trust, it would seem, can be many things. Or at least a thing of infinite variety. As for truth, well, the evidence seems clear that one man's truth is another man's lie. The answer to this complexity? Surely the answer lies in the complexity of you, of me, of all mankind. Where else? I'm sure you'll want to know that Claudia is now fully recovered from her illness and that she and Todd are very happy together. As for Catherine Brent, excuse me, Margaret Sutton, would you believe that the role she played in Todd's film revived her acting career? Well, it did. Our cast included Nina Foch, Charles Aidman, Leslie Woods, Joan Tompkins, and Joe DeSantis. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. AM Seattle. CBS News, energy and the price of oil with the subjects of discussion on two sides of the world Wednesday evening. I'm Jim Kilpatrick reporting on the CBS radio network. President Ford journeyed to Philadelphia to address a Republican fundraising dinner. He plugged his economic plan and emphasized again the need for U.S. self-sufficiency in the field of energy. If we are to grasp successfully the problems of energy, we have to do something affirmatively to find other sources. We have to develop and produce those resources at home, whether it's oil or coal or geothermal or solar or any one of the other alternatives, nuclear included, that will be a substitute. So we cannot be held up by others who come from lands across the ocean. President Ford speaking Wednesday evening in Philadelphia. Across the ocean, Secretary of State Kissinger is meeting with leaders in the Middle East. Arvin Kaup reports from Cairo. The Ford administration is hoping to reduce fuel imports by as much as 18% this coming year. That is a cut of one million barrels of imported crude oil a day. The U.S. imports a bit less than six million barrels a day, a third of which comes from the Arab oil producing nations. Secretary Kissinger did not come here to discuss the high price of oil, 
But it would be surprising indeed if the topic did not come up during his current swing through the Middle East. Part of America's policy now is to restrict food shipments to those countries which harm the United States by restricting fuel exports or charging too much for them. This is a highly selective and delicate diplomatic program. A basic part of Kissinger's policy is to organize the consuming nations into a cooperative unit able to defend their interests against the oil producers. He hopes to complete this process sometime before next March. Marvin Kelp, CBS News, Cairo. More after this. Time Magazine. What's in it for you this week? Cover story. Gerald Ford trying to fight back. What the administration proposes as solutions to America's three biggest problems. Inflation, recession, and the price of oil. A nationwide report on how big the problem really is. Why it may get worse. And which of the president's programs seems most promising. Time also looks into who is hurting and who is not. As inflation and economic stagnation hit nearly every family. And in the economy, Time reports on what might happen if the countries that use oil could unite as solidly as the countries that produce it. In the world, a first-hand look at life under Cuban socialism. In Behavior, a character study of Lyndon Baines Johnson by a young psycho-historian who once worked at the White House. And in art, new knowledge about one of the most enigmatic geniuses in history, Leonardo da Vinci. It's all there in time. Pick up a copy today. For time makes everything more interesting, including you. Nelson Rockefeller has agreed to supply a written explanation of financial gifts he has made to aides and public figures. The Senate Rules Committee may reopen Rockefeller's vice presidential confirmation hearings after the November election. More on the Rockefeller gifts from Connie Chung. Last Christmas, Nelson Rockefeller gave Steuben glass figurines costing a total of more than $32,000 to members of the National Commission on Water Quality. Rockefeller is chairman of the 14-member commission, which includes five senators, five representatives, and four public members. A spokesman for Rockefeller described the figurine as a trout leaping out of a mountain brook to catch a fly. Each costs $2,300. Some of the senators concerned about any appearance of impropriety gave their gifts away. One senator said he saw nothing wrong with the gift, but he said, it's just that Rockefeller gives Steuben glass the way others give away neckties. Connie Chung, CBS News, Washington. The seven guerrillas who gave up the Venezuelan consulate in Santo Domingo and released their hostages have arrived in Panama. The guerrillas were picked up by a bus when they left the plane. It is not known where they were taken. The freed hostages are reported in good condition in Santo Domingo. More after this. You've seen the Budweiser commercials on television, and maybe you've wondered how long people have been putting that famous Bud label on things. Well, not as long as the brewers of Bud have been putting things on the label. Things like a list of Bud's most important ingredients. Quote, brewed by our original process from the choicest hops, rice, and best barley malt. And things like the following statement. This is the famous Budweiser beer. We know of no brand produced by any other brewer, which costs so much to brew and age. Our exclusive Beechwood aging produces a taste, a smoothness, and a drinkability you'll find in no other beer at any price. Unquote. Yes, brewing beer right does make a difference. Read the Bud label. Taste the king of beers, and you'll agree. When you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Massachusetts Governor Sargent has ordered 400 extra policemen into Boston after a federal judge refused to send U.S. Marshals. 300 state police and 100 district officers were ordered to aid in quelling disturbances related to court-ordered busing to achieve integration. The action comes after another day of disturbances in the city, mainly in the predominantly black Roxbury section of Boston. I'm Jim Kilpatrick, CBS News. For the first time in history, the World Series will be played entirely on the West Coast. The Oakland Athletics Wednesday became the American League champions, and the Los Angeles Dodgers won the National League crown. They'll meet for game one in the series Saturday afternoon in Los Angeles. Oakland got the American League crown by coming out on top in the playoff series with the Baltimore Orioles. The A's clinched it Wednesday with a 2-1 victory over the Orioles. The Dodgers likewise won their playoff series, embarrassing the Pittsburgh Pirates with a 12-1 victory. This is Doug Poling, CBS News.